So Sackland invented a new ball in cricket, a new delivery yeah. um, uh, called the Doosra. So the ball spins in the opposite direction to an orthodox delivery, uh, uh, a finger spinner. So Saki is an off spinner, so the ball turns back into the batter. The Doosra turns away from the batter mm -hmm. for those who are not conversant with cricket. Uh, nobody had ever done that as a finger spinner, so that was brand new. Um, and Saki told a story about it, and he said that where they, where they, I think Saki grew up in Lahore. They lived in a in a tenement block, and they would play cricket on top of the ten, tenements, mm -hmm. uh, like a lot of kids would in in the, in Pakistan. And and he just started playing with the ball one day, and he thought, you know, it'd be really cool if if I could get the ball to spin the other way, it'd be a great weapon. And so he just started playing with the ball and, and, and working with the ball to see, you know, how he could get leverage on the ball to get his hand into a position for the ball to, for the scene to spin the other way. And so he'd just be sitting and he'd just take the ball and he'd spin it out of his fingers and it'd just like drop it in front of him six inches and he'd see that he could do it if he just turned his hand around a little bit more. And then slowly but surely it'd be okay, well, let me see if I can do this 12 inches and so he managed to get his hand around and he could do it 12 inches and slowly but surely from six inches to 12 inches mm. to 18 inches to two foot and so on and so on until he got started to progress into his bowling action now. So it's obviously there's a change in wrist action and now he's got to work with his bowling action and now he needs to deliver the ball with legally so he can't yeah. bend his elbow and, and throw the ball. He needs to deliver the ball legally, but but get his wrist into a position so the ball is going to spin. And he said it took him somewhere in the region of about two and a half years to master this. Wow. And he'd say he'd laugh. He'd laugh about guys. You know, he'd see, he'd see the other cricketers in world cricket who'd try and bowl it and they'd get frustrated or they'd throw the ball. So it'd be an illegal delivery. And he'd say, it's amazing to think that it took him two and a half years and other people would think they could do it in a couple of weeks. He says, you know, it's like, it's illogical. You know, so he mastered this delivery. Mm -hmm. he, could bowl the, he could bowl the delivery legally. And a which, which very, very few people have ever got close to being able to do. And, and so it's a really interesting insight into, into, firstly, again, it just started with an idea. You know, yeah. so he's playing. And this is really important for, for, for you know, I'm not sure if educators listen in on, on, on your channel, but there's an important thing, you know, a critical thing for us in learning is play. It's not necessarily just sitting down with, with books in front of us and, and paper and trying to memorize stuff so we can regurgitate memory. It's, you know, young children learn through play. And I think it's yeah. really important at all stages that we learn through play. And so then you've got this young man who is, he has an idea and he plays with the idea yeah. and he explores it and just step by step, you know, step by step by step, inch by inch, he, he, he invents something. And of course it's not television, it's a telephone, it's not the internet, mm -hmm. but in his field, it's something brand new. Yeah. It began with a single idea. And, you know, Sisaklan would come from a humble background in Pakistan, you know, wouldn't have grown up in a, in a privileged background. So you've got this young man who's just, if anybody's watched Sisaklan play TV on cricket, uh, cricket on TV, on YouTube, uh, from, from the days when he was a young man, is that they may notice that Sisaklan doesn't look like uh, a, a huge gifted athlete. You know, he doesn't move like Lionel Messi playing football, you know, <laughs> is because he would have grown up playing cricket in the street. So you're in a very confined area. So you're not running around on fields, you know, mm. learning to, with lots of other sports like hockey and soccer, where you're getting, you know, you're getting a very broadly developed uh, uh, patterns of movement. So Saki would not look particularly comfortable. He's no, he's no Usain Bolt when he's sprinting. And yet when, what I learned from this, was that when I started working with him, he would bowl. I had never come across a cricketer with that level of skill before. Mm. And for anybody who's watched the international darts players or the professional darts players on TV and they're aiming at trouble 20 and they can get three darts in trouble 20. And, you know, for any of us who've thrown darts at a dartboard, we know quite how miraculous that is. 
Sure. Is that that would be the level of skill that Zach Lane would have in bowling. It changed the way that I coached. Yeah. Because it opened up a lens on the level of skill that was possible. Because be up until then, I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah. And, and to, and excuse me, and to this day, I've barely seen anybody replicate a level of skill of that nature. But what it is saying to me, if you watch Zach Lane and looked at his athleticism, you'd say that he is not an innate athlete. But then when you see what he learned and he mm. taught himself and he mastered, then you would realize that, that the sky is the limit. Whatever you're trying to innovate in your field, it's not going to happen in a week, in a month, in two months or so. It will take you many, many months, probably a year or two years to get there because innovation does not come easy. Innovation comes from, as Richard said, curiosity, an idea, a uh, process for uh, um, um, uh, uh, with an open mind to experiment and having the patience to continue doing what you're doing and staying true to the process and the innovation will happen.